I know I'm only on one, one day a week. I get it. I'm gonna have to jump on uh, GarageBand and start sawing something together. <laughs> this is the House Bar Show. <laughs> and a guitar note, and then with progressive and all. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Hey, how did you mean something like? This? This is the house bar show. Wow. And a guitar note. And then progressive. And all that. Yeah, it's going to be good. The house parts radio program. Mega worldwide. Yeah, it's going to be good. Welcome back to the show. So, um, uh, John, sweat with that house. John, Johnny's still recovering from the. Uh, the joke I relayed to him during the break. Um, if you if you don't know what the joke is, it was a, a um, it was if you don't watch um, real time, one of the, a, a Russian American journalist told the joke on his show last night. That's all I'm going to tell you. Do your googling. You can find it, and you'll enjoy it. I can't necessarily tell it on the air. Um, no. The the story about Jenny Thomas has been an ongoing one. It has been. Um, Jenny Thomas's relation to QAnon and all this stuff ha are has, has we've been aware of this for a very long time. She's been, I mean, I think the first traces of this craziness really started coming up in the Obama years, and then yeah. I, you know I was I was on like I'm not as in touch and I don't pay as much attention to you, but every time it bubbled up. I was like, this person is crazy, and she's yeah. married to who, and this yeah. is cool? Right, and no, and and he doesn't have to recuse himself from any of this stuff, and she's not right. whispering in his ear about this stuff all the time. And it, for all the craziness these folks had about Hillary Clinton and her socialist dad, 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 because she wants children to have insurance in the 90s from, you know, S-chip, um, she's whispering in Bill's ear and telling him what to do. Just like, you know, you know, Biden's being puppet mastered by other people, that yeah. that kind of deal. But when it comes to Jenny Thomas, nah, no, 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 of course not. He's, uh, what are you talking about? He's completely uh, separated him from from that. Um, this, this story has sort of bubbled up over the last, um, you know, two weeks especially. And I, you know, there's this constantly moving story as well. So uh, Clarence Thomas is, I'm, did he get out today, um, or had they finally he's in the hospital? Right. Health update, Steve. Uh, no, Supreme Court justice. Oh yeah, he was released from the hospital yesterday. That's right. It wasn't this morning, but he'd been in the hospital um, for ten days. And That's some people have made the case that this looks like a show, and that he's, you know, he's doing this right as his. Wife's getting busted for all this stuff. He he splits, you know, and goes into the hospital like a sympathy moment. Do some smoke and mirrors. But he came out at exactly the wrong time. Like I, if, <laughs> if that's what you're doing, if you were, if this is a smoke screen, you need more smoke because he's coming out right as this story is gaining genuine steam, and people it would really want is. an answer from him. Because before this is this has come and gone in waves, and they never got around to really peg, you know, making him answer this. And now there, there's a very strong chance that some, you know, in the next three days, somebody, you know, if once he's out walking around, they're going to go. We need to know what Clarence Thomas thinks about her beliefs and what you know he knew about her yeah. texts and da da da. That's a real conversation. Um, he was being treated with... Especially uh, if this stuff makes it to the Supreme Court. Right. Yeah, especially the Jan 6 stuff. Um, yeah. Now, there should be no surprise that, uh, you know, Jenny Thomas and and what, you know, that she believes this stuff. Because it it's absolutely in line with everything else that she believes. And, you know, it, it she's always been this way, right? So... Um, however, um, the, the curious part to this for me is that she's, she was also allegedly, and that's the, it's hard to even discuss these cause it's actually happening now. She allegedly paid for some of the buses that brought the Jan Sixers to the Capitol. Well, to the, to the grounds. Yeah. So, um, 
this is from uh, Woodward's and uh, you know Bob Woodward and uh, Robert Costa co-wrote this um, this article together, and they they got uh, I guess access to twenty nine of her messages. Uh, the Bob, well they, the reporters did. The, apparently, the Jan Six Committee has gotten two thousand three hundred and twenty of them. And um, they are not, by the way, nobody is in any of these things claiming that they're covered in any kind of executive privilege. Like, she's not in the orbit no. in any way. Um, so, uh, the but she, she refers to a couple of, like, hardcore um, QAnon people. Uh, a, a, a dude who... Uh, is regularly on Alex Jones's show, or was until he went too far. Um, this this guy, um, I want to, yeah, uh, Pygenic, I think is how you pronounce his name. Um, Pygenic. He he was like, he's the guy who Alex Jones got busted for saying that the Sandy Hook, um, you know, massacre was a false flag. It was staged. The parents were faking it. No children were lost. That's and he tormented these people with this BS. For a long time, and it was it was heart wrenching to watch. And these poor people ultimately sued him, and he's being deposed, and now he's feigning illness so he doesn't have to get deposed. That's an ongoing thing, and ultimately he's going to have to pay this money, and it's going to be devastating to Infowars, and he deserves it, and it's awful, and and that. But this guy Pajenik, who was always on there, believed all things. All these things were false flags. Columbine was a false flag, um, and. and and uh, the like, the Waco. I mean, everything. Pearl Harbor. Like everything is just government manipulation, intent on you know new world order kind of stuff. And it is so over the top that um, that he like that Alex stopped having him on, and for for wow. a little while. Then he brought him back after you know you go into exile for a little while. But he. He brought him back on, but this is the guy who constantly oversteps even stuff that you know Alex Jones know that legally he'll be on the hook for now. So they so they yeah. broomed him again. Well, a little less than a year and a half ago, or uh, a year, you know, and change. Here's Ginny Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas, basically quoting this guy to Mark Meadows in text, going. Uh, I mean, I've heard this. Is this possible? And it, she just reeks of this kind of gibberish. I mean, she sounds exactly for a grown woman who is the wife of a sitting Supreme Court justice, who you would think in some ways is a would be a serious human being because of the seriousness of what their partner does for a living, in theory. Yeah. Um, you would think she would be surrounded by enough reality that there would be enough red flags in what she hears and sees to go, I, oh, you know, I, I can tell the difference between reality and crap because my my husband comes home with like paperwork that he's studying on all these. I mean, if he does, that's the other thing. I suppose I'm giving Clarence Thomas a lot of credit in this, but in theory, yeah, hasn't he literally never spoken a word? Well, no, court? he's after Scalia died, he started speaking a little more. But the idea was is that he always he asked two questions in the last year, I think, but. The in in theory, he at least has clerks come by the house and deal with stuff, and that she's sure. been to gatherings with him with all the rest of this goes. She's surrounded by real issues, and yet she has no radar for lunacy. And it's one thing to say, well, then that must be there's something to it because she she's a. I mean, that's the that's the dangerous part of this conversation for a lot of these lunatics is like, look. Yeah. A wife of a Supreme Court justice who sees the insides. She knows the deep state. If there's anything deeper than deep state than a lifetime appointment, I don't know what it is. And she's the, you know, she knows that this is real. And meanwhile, she doesn't. The weird thing is, is her texts all end with like, is this possible? This could be possible. You need to look into this. Which just means she's slapdash with her, with this kind of lunacy. And she, in some ways, you know, is so desperate to have Trump back in the White House 
that well, and those are all like the that's the fox news way of things as you ask this thing as a question oh yeah but it really goes out as a statement right it's the and and a sarcastic question is not an actual question and that's the, that's how yeah. tucker carlson does it all the time russell brand does the we're just presenting you know uh different Ideas. points of view right yeah and so but let's see um the text messages that they got um from jenny thomas do not include uh the responses that meadows sent back to her um but the ones that i guess uh, uh woodward and costa got do but the next oh, yeah. day thomas sent a follow-up let me guess they don't say like i'm gonna block you next time right stop blowing up my phone they're, they're not like that with it they? so here you go so this is um let's see if the november 5th uh let's see do we have time oh we got to take a break when we come back i want to read some of these because this I is again to. yeah the it, it, master uh creep theater um we need to delve into what the actual beliefs that she's got going on there are and how this affects law in our country. Yeah. I mean, never mind that there's, you know, Kavanaugh's, you know, debts disappeared out of nowhere because they wanted him on the Supreme Court. Um, this is stuff that it affects the opinions written into other stuff and nearly everything. From the conservative side. We'll be back right after this. It's the House Park Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Stop what you're doing. <laughs> because we're coming back to the House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Oh my God! They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. Now let's get back with House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. So, um, she... It's a it, shame if you had to go to break. Yeah, it is. So you share, like, because some days you just need fart jokes and other stuff to get you through. It just yeah, is, like you know? four and a half minutes of farts. N yeah. Necessary, necessary. Fake ones, by the way, just in case anybody at home thinks we're trying some sort of next Mostly level... Mostly fake. Yeah. Mo oh, I see. Great. I was taking <laughs> that for granted. Um, so, Ginny Thomas, sp mm. sp speaking of... Uh, of fart air um was texting these messages to mark meadows and they were they're they're good because they give you a snapshot of her thinking so um in the message this is from the washington post article in the messages thomas and meadows assert a belief that the election was stolen and seem to share a solidarity of purpose of faith of uh, purpose and faith though they occasionally express hmm. difference on tactics <laughs> you think <laughs> and what yeah uh, the intense pressures you and our president are now experiencing are more intense than anything experienced. And in, and then in parentheses, but I only felt a fraction of it in 91. Uh, Thomas wrote uh, to Meadows on November 19th, an apparent reference to Justice Thomas's 91 confirmation hearings in which Anita Hill testified he made unwanted sexual comments when he was her boss. Thomas strongly denied the accusations. The first of the 29 messages between Ginny and Thomas was sent on November 5th, two days after the election. She sent him a link to a YouTube video labeled Trump Sting with CIA director Steve Pajenik, the biggest election story in history, QFS dash blockchain. So let's just understand. She's she's going all in with uh, sandpaper lube at this point. She is not the, the, she's not tiptoeing into this zone. No. She this is straight up. It was uh, it's it's not only is it rigged, it's stolen. And they're all trying to destroy the country with, you know, a big international global scheme, right? So she shared a video that uh, of Pajenix, um, you know, who's the guy who I told you about earlier, who has who thinks that Sandy Hook was a false flag, thinks New Newtown was a false flag, or thinks um, um, beg your pardon, the the like, well, uh, Pulse was a false flag, the uh, Florida High School was a false flag, like all of it. It's just done so you can take guns away. That's the only reason. Every so often, gun rights ad advocates hate guns so much that they they round up a bunch of kids and kill them just to try and get rid of guns, just to show how bad they are. Like, it's the weirdest theory. I, it, here's the thing. If you said one of them was, you could almost ride that point that some nutcase 
arranged for a shooting so because they want you know they it wasn't going fast enough like people who stage hate crimes and the like you know what i mean those mm -hmm. happen but that you know but if all of them are then none of them are then it's you know obviously people who hate guns wouldn't also use them to just kill a bunch of kids like ah i hate this thing so much i'm going to use it in the worst possible yeah. way and it's gibberish anyways so Watermark ballots in over 12 states have been part of a huge Trump and military white hat sting operation in 12 key battleground states, you wrote. So white hats are what the QAnon people believe are their, these like operatives. They're the good guys in the deep state. The white hats. They talk about them all the time. Oh, the deep, deep, deep undercover. Yeah, deep, deep, deep undercover. In November 5th, uh, uh, sorry, in the November 5th message to Meadows, Thomas uh, went on to quote a passage that had circulated on right-wing websites. Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators, co uh, parentheses, elected officials, bureaucrats, social media, censorship mongers, fake stream media reporters, etc., are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now. And over the coming days, and we'll be living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition. So, yeah, man, this is not the situation where they think this is not possible. I we went to bed on election night. We woke up, and there's some shenanigans going on here. This is Hillary Clinton has already been hung. Nonsense. This is the this is the story. That, and then my favorite, I have to say, it's. Do you have a favorite QAnon? Uh, moment or idea because I do mine is is um, that is that all the baddies you know from uh, Hillary Clinton to uh, Joe Biden this was all baddies? yeah oh yeah all the all the big well-known ones Podesta uh, you know Debbie Wasserman Schultz whatever they were they've all been tried by Trump in a specially special military tribunal at Gitmo or depending on who you look at, at special little gallows booths on White House grounds so they can't be seen, which is just creepy as hell. That people are just being hung at the White House surreptitiously after a military... I mean, it's crazy. But my favorite part isn't that. It's that they were replaced by clones. And those clones, because, they're, per because they're perfect clones, I suppose, are... Uh, are also guilty, even though they never committed the crimes because they haven't been alive long enough to have actually done the stuff they're talking about. But they are going to be hung too. <laughs> they just like it's, like... it's like digging somebody up and executing them again. So that's the punchline of a lot of the QAnon theories is yeah. that all these people are going to be hung in a freaking public square? Yes, yes. Well, or that they already have. Uh, Tom Hanks was a clone. He and his wife were clones. That's why they were hiding because they were they they said they had COVID I and they were they hiding. Were just eating baby blood. No, they they did that to stay alive. That's how they that's how they've gotten famous all of, over these years. That that's you know that's what that's the uh, price okay. you gotta pay to look as young as Tom Hanks does. Because I mean, if you look at him now and you look at him in the you know the man with one red shoe, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, I mean it's like seeing twins. It's real I, hard to tell. Has he aged at, a day? Yeah, Hillary hasn't aged a day since. 1996 i i love how they're like they take this stuff because it makes you live forever i'm like well apparently it's not working that's not really good yeah they no i want to switch what they're taking they yeah wrong baby yeah that's right they was they got the benjamin button baby and they actually drank no. not aged baby He's already no, been he's old, not, right? Yeah, that's right. Both ways. We slipped some progeria blood in there with him. All right. So November 10th, Thomas drew a reply for Meadows. She wrote, Mark, I wanted to text you and tell you for days that you're in my prayers. And uh, she said, help this great president stand firm, invoking the greatest heist of our history. Uh, Thomas added in the message that Meadows should, quote, uh, listen to Rush. Mark Stein, Bongino, and Cleta. I don't know who Cleta is, but Bongholio we cover quite often. Um, appearing to refer to conservative commentators Rush uh, Limbaugh, Mark Stein, as well as lawyer Cleta Mitchell, I see, who was involved in Trump's push to claim victory in Georgia despite... Okay, that's the woman. She's just one of the people who's been, you know, griping on websites. A minute later, <laughs> she's blowing up his phone. 
Uh, she and oh Meadows responded. Uh, yeah, but oh, uh, Me- Meadows actually responded. He said, "I will stand firm. We will fight until there is no fight left. Our country is too precious to give up on. Thanks for all you do." People text this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, My texts I, are more like, "Do you want the dinner with the beans and the rice, or just the fish tacos?" That's right. Yeah, exactly. Can I have your sides? I'll, I'll eat your sides if you don't want them. That's the it like. Right. Yeah, and then a bunch of emojis. Could you order pancakes with your breakfast? Because mine don't come with pancakes. And then nine minutes later, after he replied, Thomas replied back to him, tearing up and praying for you guys. So proud to know you. Lots of exclamation points. Thomas then turned to her frustrations, uh, her frustrations with congressional Republicans, which is a big. Th- I'm I'm a huge fan. I enjoy that. I like when they attack each other, um, and it, it's it's a side sport of mine. It's a hobby. House and Senate guys are pathetic too. Only four GOP House members seen out in street rallies with grassroots. Yeah, that's that's going to lead to something bad there. Gomer, Jordan, Gosar, and Roy. What a shock. She appeared to be referring to, uh, yeah, okay, the, uh, this was a troubled time for Trump. News organizations had declared Biden the winner on, winner on November 7th after a review of vote totals in each state and the electoral count. Um, and then she starts writing to him again. Where the heck are all those who benefited by president's coattails? Um, you mean the people who won their elections when he lost? Who has the coattails? Doesn't the winner have the coattails in this situation? All right. Um, she wrote in, uh, November 10th, uh, she wrote another one referencing Jared, like just forwarded to your Gmail an email I sent Jared this AM. Oh, so he has a Gmail account. So he's using private email servers while working in the white house and, and exchanging emails that are crucial to, between the wife of a SCOTUS and all right, uh, a SCOTUS judge, that's good. A justice rather. Um, just forwarded your Gmail an email I sent Jared this AM. I'm sure he cracked it right open. Sydney Powell and, and improved coordination now will help the Calvary come and fraud exposed and America saved. Fraud ex- I mean, she sounds like Roseanne. She, we, we dealt with this with the Roseanne Barr, um, you know, as she yeah. kind of descended into QAnon and then went off the air after, you know, for some reason, she found it a little screwy that... That Trump, w- that everybody, Wano Savin and all these people, and uh, Kirsten W., the woman who died of COVID, shock, um, had all promised her, oh, yeah, not only is Trump going to be back any day now, but all these people are dead. They hung them. They're going to hang their clones too. And he's been running things. And Biden's actually not even, he's on a, a set. He's not actually president. Like, where are all those people? Like, when, uh, you know, one of the funniest movies to watch is. Um, any 2012 documentary after 2013, they're hilarious. It's like why uh, yeah. it's like why Y2K why documentaries were hilarious in 2001. They just are. They're they're adorable. And and this where where's the all right? So none of this panned out. Give me your best shot. Why is it? Did it happen? Are we in a parallel universe? What? What kind of Mandela effect what answer do you have? Totally to this? happened. I saw the movie. Right. So, anyways, we got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Uh, Philip Itner's in uh, Ukraine, and he's going to be joining us after the news in uh, after the next break and the news at the top of the next hour. So you don't want to miss that. This is the House Park Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. You're listening to House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Uh, oh, I thought there was going to be like a new one every break. I was so excited. You want more, Hal? We'll give you more. House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on Chicago's Progressive Talk, WCBT 820. Hoo-yah! Welcome back. So we're looking into these uh, Jeannie, pa- uh, Jeannie Thomas um, text. And in and amongst of it, it shouldn't come as any surprise that she's basically cut and paste in QAnon posts at this point. And uh, there is no indication, by the way, that she has changed her mind at all. It is one thing to get swept up in lunacy while your world is crumbling around you because your party is losing and you can't believe it and this whole thing. And, you know, she could have had, you know, 
uh, like COVID lockdown anxiety mixed with other stuff and just watched all the wrong, just basically what happened to Putin. He got COVID paranoia and ended up watching a lot of Russian YouTube videos about um, Ukraine is actually a part of Russia, you know that? And uh, so it's not surprising that she dove down into that. She wrote to him, uh, to Mark Meadows, this war is psychological. PSYOP! In all quotes, or in all caps. And then I knew it. She, writes, she writes him at, at, at butt in the morning. Mark, don't want to wake you. That's why she texted to the call, I guess. Uh, sounds like sure, Sydney yeah. and her team are getting inundated with evidence of fraud. Make a plan. Release the Kraken and save us from the left taking America down. Oh, God. Remember the Kraken? Remember all the Kraken stuff when we were cracking jokes when, at, at her expense? And the Kraken, and everybody was like, is the Kraken her her lawsuit with all the where with all the typos I'm in so it glad you said lost too. yeah is the right is it is sydney powell the kraken is she cracking under pressure is the left cracking under pressure is the kraken the actual ray harryhausen monster that's the virgin eating beast from uh from clash of the titans that looks like a giant version of the uh the, the creature from the black lagoon with a tail or is the kraken simply and why, don't, <laughs> and why don't we hear the left howl like this about like we've got to save our country from from like trump is like as bad as it can get and we're yeah. like all right guys we need to regroup this is really not good Let's, oh they think they think look. the the woman's march with that with the knitted uh cat hats um uh -huh. is equivalent to this instead of just being a like a protest which effectively is what it is just like this awful man is going to be president of our lovely country this is not right that's the extent of it right meanwhile um you know these folks are drumming up an entire like and again even the most like left-wing like people screaming and crying on election night when hillary lost because they were emotionally impacted by it and all that still they didn't go and create kind of like this sideline dc alternative universe that exists you know what i mean like they didn't we didn't go and concoct this idea like i guess they think russiagate was that that that's what they call russiagate we concocted this whole thing where he was tied to the, yeah, which yeah. by the way the the uh that that's been in the news as well regarding the alleged hunter biden laptop which by the way doesn't exist does not does not exist it doesn't exist Anybody who wants to tell me it exists needs to show me a picture of it and they need to show me the metadata from the files from it. I am not going to take Russian disinfo printed on paper and mailed to someone and saying this came from a laptop. Please get over yourselves. But anyways, because of that stuff coming back up, these people have said, well, you know, they were tormenting him by making up this concussion. They spied on his campaign, right? That They spied on his campaign. Even though... The uh, the data that was gathered that he's referring to of Russian phones pinging in the White House were during the Obama administration. The what there was this weird thing about these Russian burner phones that were pinging all around the White House grounds, oddly during the transition. And that's all. Not. Here's the numbers, here's the calls they made, recordings made, not here's the text of their emails, none of that stuff. It's just that these, right. these phones were pinging the towers. And this guy whose job it was, because the U.S. government had been attacked multiple times, as we know, not only has did we um, did the RNC and the DNC get hacked, but so did David Petraeus' emails, his private, and an attempt to do his, his state emails. Uh, CIA emails, rather, which failed, luckily. Um, you know, the interesting thing is the only person that was attempted, uh, there was an attempted hacking of that never got hacked was Hillary Clinton's private server. <laughs> the only one that was, state got hacked. You know, WikiLeaks posted stuff from, a, you know, from the RNC and the DNC. Well, from the DNC. They didn't post anything from the RNC. I don't know why that is. Um... They only, you know, two, but they had both, but they only, okay. Anyways, hmm. the, the odd part about this, I don't know, but like, 
is that Hillary Clinton's email server that everybody's like, she should not have used it. This could have exposed classified documents to the world. She was slapped actually. Nobody ever hacked that. Nobody was ever able to hack that. The 30,000 emails that were supposedly missing that uh, Trump asked Russia to find were given from the other accounts they were sent to and they amounted to a hill of beans. They were all wedding plans and all that kind of stuff. It was like not not personal stuff that needs to be turned over as evidence. And uh, it, I mean, honestly. But this, this is an, a, a huge deal that she's this nuts. You know, there was a moment when, do you remember when, yes. the, when, when Trump and Pence got into office and they went to the church for the first time and they had to sit there and listen to all the different religions give their addresses? And, and Trump was like, what mm -hmm. is this? And uh, Karen Pence walked up to the statue of Jesus and wouldn't walk away. She was just kind of staring at it. And Mike Pence did this really weird thing where he pulled her away, like kind of yanked her a little bit. And then that same thing happened when she shook she shook the hands of uh, of um, Jared and Ivanka's kids. And he reached over and kind of pulled her hand because she was just she kept shaking. It was just weird. It was like it was like somebody's meds were off kind of moment. And then the rest of the time, they basically just kept her out of most stuff like we didn't hear from her much yeah. the only time he ever did was when you know trump called her carrot pence because she came to the national prayer breakfast thing but um this is that you know that they they obviously went to they took they went to certain ends to kind of distance pence from her as far as her behavior they're doing none of that Clarence Thomas is not releasing a statement. The Supreme Court's not releasing a statement. Our husbands and wives have no impact on our blah, blah, blah. We speak freely in our homes about our belief systems, but we do not speak about the internal work. They're not doing any of that stuff. And the expectation is, is that they won't. Now, do I think Clarence Thomas will get impeached because of this or be forced to step down because of this? No, I don't. Should he? No. Yeah. Absolutely. But will he? No. The weird thing is, is what happens if she gets in trouble for participating in this, for hiring those buses to take people to the, you know, to the White House grounds, to, you know, and then to the, the people who went, uh, eventually went to the Capitol, because the people she's talking to and about are not just standard MAGA folks. These are straight up QAnon. So the people that she brought and coordinated more than likely are in that mentality, meaning that some of them showed up on the White House steps in the building yeah, and felons. attacking people. Right. And so she delivered people. Did they have the intent of committing a felony? And if they did, she's going to have to answer to that. And if she gets in trouble for that and then they say, well, this is a free speech issue and it goes to the Supreme Court, where does that leave Clarence Thomas? Um, it's, it's, it's incredibly sketchy, but the reality is, is I, I feel like it's, a, it's like frozen in place. We will see whether or not they address this. I'm, I think they should. I think the news is going to ask him at some point. I don't think he, he gets to do events. He'll use ill health as a way to dodge that. We got to take a break. When we come back. Philip's going to join us, um, from Lviv and catch us up on what's going on in Ukraine. We're going to talk about some of the news coming out of there that the Russians seem to have changed their tactic now, and they've lost a seventh general. We'll be back. Mm. American, psycho, the psycho, 